Hi, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode 201 of Ask Dave, and we're going to continue the discussion today about the ICOM 7300 uh, HF plus 6 meter radio. Uh, last time I looked at a few things it could do, and we tried this and that, and uh, came to the conclusion it's a pretty nice little radio. Well, um, I decided that it would be appropriate to, as I was working with the radio, jot down notes on this brand new technology, a two or three year old technology, on a 79 year old typewriter. So that's what I did. I typed my notes on this typewriter as I went. Now I divide these into three parts. The first part has to do with FT8 and uh, what we did with FT8. And then the second part are a few uh, clarifications based on comments that I got from Ask Dave episode 200. And then the last comments are my review of the uh, ICOM 7300, a very nice radio. Uh, by the way, uh, it really helps my channel if you'll just uh, take a moment to click like um, on YouTube. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Okay, so for FT8, um, I brought up uh, the uh, WSJT-X, the latest version, the latest um, release version of it that has the new FT8 in it, but not the FT4. And I had to, the first thing I had to do was set up communications with the radio. Um, the computer wanted to do 19,200 uh, baud for communications, but um, uh, I uh, decided the, the 7300, when I went into the menu and looked for the setting there, I discovered that it had a setting of auto, which meant that the two should have negotiated um, a bit rape. They did not. So I set the um, 7300 to 19,200 and uh, it immediately began to work. Um, the FT8 communications test and the push to test test or push to talk test worked. Note that no driver was required. Uh, there is a requ uh, driver mentioned in the manual, um, but I was able to plug it in and just have it go. Uh, it came up this uh, sound card uh, USB audio codec number three on my computer. Uh, it will come up differently, of course, on uh, your computer, maybe. Now the next uh, problem that I had to solve was getting the radio to transmit the audio from the computer. I had to go into menu, then set, then connectors, then data mod, and then USB. Now I think that's data modulation, can't be sure. Uh, and I wanted it to come from the USB cable rather than the mic cable. Okay, then the audio began to work. Now one thing I noticed right off the bat was that the received bandwidth on FT8 is from 700 hertz to 2200 hertz, which is not very much, it's 1500 hertz. Uh, the channel is actually about three kilohertz wide, so you're only getting part of the channel. I tried various ways to open that bandwidth up a bit and couldn't find any, so I'm gonna ask for your help. Uh, if you will tell me in the comments uh, what uh, you have to do to get a wider bandwidth um, uh, for that, it should be three kilohertz or around there, be much, yeah, that meant I was leaving out a lot of the FT8 uh, QSOs and could not participate in them. Now, uh, I noted that somehow from time to time, because I was listening to the signal over on the computer on my SDR radio, my SDR Play um, RSP1A, which was on the uh, little receive-only antenna that I had outside. Needless to say, it was an extraordinarily strong signal. Um, but uh, I noticed that from time to time it would transmit to broadband noise. So I put the um, camera on the uh, scope over here and looked at the transmitted signal as it went out. And somehow the transmitted signal has some occasional 
broadband noise. Now, I don't know why that is. It did not seem to affect the conversations that I had, but um, it, it did seem kind of odd. So, I mean, the radio itself was saying that it was occasionally pumping on a little bit of broadband noise. Um, it may have been a, a loose connector or maybe the, the USB uh, doesn't like to, um, doesn't like, it, it wasn't plugged in all the way or there was some noise on the line or something, but uh, it, it did do that. Now, um, I was able to have several uh, QSOs. Here are the QSOs that I had uh, on FT8 uh, with Canada. Uh, call District 2, Call District 5, Call, call District, uh, let's see, um, 0. Okay, all these are on 20 meters, uh, 8, 4, and 2 again. All these are on uh, 20 meters with the hex beam antenna pointed pretty much east. Now, this one down here uh, is one that I had on single sideband. J68 Hotel Zulu is in... Uh, St. Lucia, or I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, uh, but it's DX, and uh, the guy who runs it is an American, so did not have accent uh, to worry about, but uh, there was a huge pileup, and I had to um, work very hard to pull that one out, but he heard me. I turned the beam down in that direction, and he heard me. Of course, whenever you're working DX, the signal reports are a useless 5.9 every time, but he was actually about 5.9. He was really booming in here. Unfortunately, that meant that he was, uh, a lot of people in the U.S. were booming in back there. So let's go back to the notes here and uh, see what we've got. Um, I tried a couple different bands. Um, I did note that uh, number eight here that uh, there's no knob to turn down the power easily. Uh, many of the things that I'm used to on the uh, FTDX 3000 that are knobs that are right next to each other where I want them, you can turn them uh, to change the bandwidth, to move the pass band around, to uh, change the width of the frequency response uh, and uh, put a notch right on top of things and the menus uh, for some of the things on the front panel is just right there uh, for you. I'm kind of used to that um, and so when there weren't any knobs uh, to do that and it was something in the menu I, I just sort of did without. Now I am assured by users that they figure this out very, very quickly and get all the, uh, what they want. One of the things, now let's go into a couple things I learned from the comments to uh, Ask Dave number 200. Um, if you press and hold on the meter, you'll get a view where you see all the meters at once, which is kind of nice. Um, if you press and hold a function button, you will get an adjustment screen. It's always over to the right here. Um, the auto-tune button on the right, which I had guessed was to initiate an auto-tune of the antenna, uh, is not so. It is for CW use. It allows you to tune in right on top of that signal. Uh, the SD card can hold um, custom configurations. So if you've got a favorite configuration, say for data, and you can plug that card in and another one for CW, another one for sideband and so on. Um, normally on the FTDX3000, I'd use the band stacking registers to do that. Uh, one, one version of 20 meters is digital, another is CW, another is sideband. Uh, so you can do that a variety of ways. One person wondered why I didn't go through the usual transmit receive specifications. Well, they're as good as any other radio out there. All the radios today are good. They are more than acceptable. They're great. So I didn't choose to uh, say anything about it because it's probably got some esoterica that's a little bit better than the competitor and so on. But uh, it seemed to all work fine for me. Now the speech button on the front, I was way off on my guess. I shouldn't have guessed as much. 
um, this will say the frequency out loud. So let's listen to this. I'm going to push this button and I'll put the microphone right up at the top. F zero one four point one zero seven two megahertz USB data. Now it says three things. I catch the frequency and I catch the uh, mode, but I don't catch the uh, um, the first one. Somebody, I'm sure, will tell me what that is. Another person said you don't need the multi knob. Uh, if you want, you can use the touch screen. Uh, yeah, I found myself automatically using the multi knob. And I was told also it had SWR scan capability for the whole band. Now, I just want to mention one thing about the spectrum scope on this that I really like. I'm looking at the whole band, and that's very nice. The FTDX3000 will allow me to do a variety of things, but look at the entire band is not one of them. I have to pick different choices, different choices for bandwidth. I really do wish that they would come out with a firmware update that would allow an option of looking at the entire band, like the entire uh, 20 meter band and so on. Now, it was also pointed out to me that on the spectrum scope, uh, the ATT or attenuation is only for the scope. It's not for uh, the radio itself. And similarly, time changes the time base for the time domain scope. Now, as you can see here, as I push the time button multiple times, it affects the scope readout. If you want to see waveforms, you want to pick a pretty tiny time base. Now, there is also a correction on the back. The remote jack on the back, I had thought, because I had misread the manual, that it was for some kind of uh, push-button control. It's not. It's designed for using uh, communicating between a PC and the uh, rig. Um, it does essentially the same thing that the USB does. Use the USB. Don't, don't sweat this one here. But it allows you to use um, ICOM's extra cost RS dash BA1 software, which uh, will uh, give you pretty much complete control of the radio uh, from the computer. Um, so the USB and the remote jack do essentially the same thing. Interestingly, in the manual, it emphasizes the remote jack for the RG or the RSBA1. Uh, software. However, in the picture that they have on the website for the software, they show a CD with a USB cable. So just use the USB cable. It's a lot easier. Now we get to the important part. Okay. And that is just simply this. What do I think of this radio? Here's what I think of the radio. And, and you'll have to take this understanding I'm pretty much a Yesu guy, and I really love my Yesu FTDX3000. It is a marvelous machine. It is more expensive than what you will pay for the uh, 7300, but not by much. I have become quite used to its uh, human computer or human radio interface, and it's... Uh, very easy to use, and I'm used to it. I know just what button to go for. But uh, my opinion on this radio, okay, this is starting here, number 23. My opinion, this is a pretty spectacular radio. Okay. Um, personally, I would like to see more items available as knobs or buttons, like bandwidth controls uh, and so on. Um, but that's a matter of getting used to the radio. Now, I'm used, very used to the FTDX3000, so if you're learning on this radio, you'll learn its way of doing things. Now, the next question, is this a good first HF radio? First, let me note that ICOM offers not one, but two less expensive radios in their line. So for them to claim that this is the beginner's radio leads you to ask, well, what's with the other two radios that are 
lower in price. One is a venerable radio, been around for a long time. The other one, the 7100, is kind of set up for mobile, but it also has uh, two meters and 70 centimeters. So the question then becomes, <laughs> If this is the entry level radio, what are those two? Okay, so I'm not gonna call this an entry level radio. Um, I can't really say if it's a good first radio. It's definitely not a simple radio. Um, if you think you'll spend most of your time in casual rag chews, this is too much radio. Uh, get one of the other uh, radios that's less expensive. Um, However, this radio will allow you to set it up for kind of a point and shoot type of thing like you would a camera. I've got a real nice Lumix G7 camera here and I can set it up all different kinds of ways to get exactly what I want. Or I can just put the dial in uh, what they call Intelligent Auto, which is their point and shoot mode and just literally point, shoot and get great pictures. So you can do similar things with this radio to where Things are kind of set in the middle, you know, and they work really well. But then, um, with the complex parts of the radio are just out of sight, ready to, to jump forth as you learn how to use them. Now, here is bottom line number one. I don't think anyone will regret buying this radio. Okay, that's takeaway number one. Now the key competitor to this radio is the ASU FT991A. Now I will grant you that that's not a full SDR radio, which, you know, when you look at the specifications, what matters is how well the radio performs. And the 991A performs very well and adds two meters and 70 centimeters. Um, the 991 versus the 991A, the A has uh, much better spectrum scope and things like that, which very clearly Yesu did in direct response to the 7300. So they're trying to put an equivalency between those two radios. Now, I don't think you'll, you'll be in bad shape with either one of them. Uh, for bandwagon jumpers, meaning people who want to get the radio everybody else is getting, which is not a bad thing, um, then the 7300 is the one to do. Then you'll find a lot of like-minded people on the air. So if you've got a question about your 7300, you can talk to other people who have 7300s. It's a very popular radio. Now, do I recommend this radio? The answer is yes to newbies on HF and to those with lots of experience also. If you are an avid contester and DXer, and by that I mean you are really, really, really into DXing or contesting, you'll want a fancier radio. But, this is the main carry way, away, you will not go wrong with a 7300 in the shack. Okay, I guess that's about as much as I can say about a radio. Uh, so my two takeaways there, uh, you'll not regret buying this radio and um, you will uh, not go wrong with having one in the shack. So uh, there, it's a good radio, go ahead. And if you're on the edge about getting this radio, go ahead and take that jump. It's a really good radio. Now, ICOM is in the process now of kind of filling out the rest of its line with the technology that's in the 7300. And we're going to see Yesu and Kenwood do the same thing with their radios. Uh, Yesu recently came out with the FTDX101D. Now, the D in this case means it's got an automatic antenna tuner in it. Okay, uh, it's not the D model of the 101. Now they use FTDX101D to differentiate it from the very original FT101ABCD uh, uh, that they had. I have uh, in the closet here a Yesu FT101 Bravo that's a 1970s radio that's just a wonderful performer. Okay, 
So there you have it. I have made my statement on the ICOM 7300. Now I am going to be at uh, Dayton 2019, uh, which is coming up in a week and a half here. And I'll see you there if you can make it. I'll be wearing my OG shirt wherever I go. It'll be different color. And I would love to stop and talk with Augies wherever I go. So please do, let's get to know each other in person for an eyeball QSO. Now, so don't forget, I mentioned earlier, take the time to press like, please, uh, because that helps YouTube know that this is a, a video they should recommend. Please subscribe and please click the bell so that you'll get a notification of future videos. Uh, check out the tip jar, Patreon, etc. cetera. Uh, this uh, chart right here shows various URLs that allow you to make, to support this channel. I'm not a charity, <laughs> so it's not a contribution. Um, it's support for this channel. So, until we next meet, I hope we meet at Dayton. And until we next meet, 73.